Now, do you guys remember that one transport truck from Mudrunner that was extremely long and could fit basically almost everything on the back of it? Well, a group of explorers went deep underground and managed to unearth this... And it is basically the exact same thing, however, functioning in SnowRunner. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and walk through what this thing can do. We're going to walk through some of the uh, technical specifics of it. And we're also going to walk through some of its capabilities. And also, if you're interested in checking out this mod, make sure you check the link to the mod.io page in the description down below. Now, currently, it is uh, not completely clear whether or not they're going to be doing a, or whether or not they're going to be doing a console version of this rig. Um, I'm not completely sure on that off the top of my head right now, but I will update you guys in the future if that becomes more clear. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Holy cow, it takes a minute. It takes a minute to fire up. Let's have a, whoa! Dude, okay, this interior is sick. This interior is awesome. What's the horn like? I mean, okay, I get that. That'll that'll work. Whoa! So the first, second, third, and fourth axles steer. And the, so they both do on the front and the back. So that does help a lot with mobility. Does it fit in the garage? Because I guarantee you, it does. Oh my god. Now, I guarantee you this is the longest truck in SnowRunner, at least in terms of, you know, transport vehicles that aren't just basically vehicles that have been just expanded. And let's go ahead and see, oh my god, KZGT 8530T gives us an A power to weight rating in something this big. Gearbox-wise, we got Special, Fine Tune, and Advanced Special. Then we have Stock and Active. Oh my god. Active actually sits higher, so we'll go with that. We start off with 55-inch tires, and I think it's like just 55 is what you get. You have a variety of all-terrains, off-road tires, and chained tires. And the thing about the chained tires is the fact that you really only get one chained option. I mean, there's it's basically these, except with chains on them. So I think I'm actually going to go with... I think I'm actually going to go with these. I don't generally use these, but they should be pretty good. Now, we'll go ahead and get them installed on the rig. And then I'm going to go with the Advanced Heavy. And we'll do a short round cap snorkel. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is the longest flatbed in the game that isn't a trailer. Okay, so we've got that flatbed. We've got the front flatbed without the rear. And then another flatbed, which that's kind of just a frame. Not sure yet what that's for. You've got a log loader that sits in the middle. You've also got an expanded fuel tank and a log carrier. Oh, I bet you that, yep, it's for the log carrier. Gotcha. Yo, and then that sits on the end of the frame. That's what that's for. And then you can actually do a rear, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, you can't do the rear section by itself. Okay, I was wanting to see if you can do the rear flatbed and then the crane and the log carrier up front, but you can't. That's fine, though. So, for our purposes right now, we're going to go with the giant flatbed. And exhaust-wise, you actually have stock or muzzle exhaust. I'm just going to go with muzzle exhaust because it's one giant pipe. And then we got caged beacon, caged beacon, and parking lights. Now, we can also do roof fog lights if you so desire. I'm not going to throw them on this one, but you guys can if you want. Whoa! We've actually got a full selection of wheels, too, which is really, really cool. I dig that. I actually think these really fit the character and personality of the truck well. Uh, it took off the frame add-on. Okay. So, there's a couple of glitches with it, but it's nothing you can't figure out as you go. Now, you can actually change up the colors quite a bit, though. Quite a bit. That's pretty legit. All right. So, our factory color is this very, like, faded orange. You can go for a red if you like, but I think I'm going to actually stick with that faded color. Hey, you can throw beans on the dash, and you can throw, like, a couple of different things, you know, just to hang from the... I was going to say the rearview mirror, but more like the ceiling. And let's take it outside and see what it can do. Now... An obvious comparison to this for a lot of people is going to be the Burley. And the Burley, while it is... Oh my god, this is a two forward gear automatic mode. What the heck? Okay, that's weird. It's different, but it's not like... It's not bad, it's just different. And the thing is, you can also, I believe... Can you put trailers behind this guy? No way, hold on. Oh wait, okay, never mind. 
yeah, it doesn't really look like you can. Let me take it into the trailer store, because even if I, I'm not able to spawn them in because of the area, we'll still be able to see. Flatbed. But, but that doesn't make any sense. Flatbed times three, one dollar. Okay, but it also says installed add-ons or trailers block trailer attachment. So let me see if I can load it. This is very weird, like very, very weird. Okay, so, so that's an odd place for them to, whoa, you can do the whole airplane on just the back of the truck? That's insane. That's insane. So there's this weird area up front where it doesn't seem like you can put anything. Let me see. Oh, it won't let you buy it. Okay. I was wondering if there was, like, a weird workaround for that, but I don't know. Like, there's not much that we're, that we're able to do, but I'm actually going to try and load some stuff onto the back because I feel like that's the biggest thing people are going to use this thing for. Uh, maybe a little bit of logging people will use it for, but I definitely see people using this thing as a uh, vehicle hauler. Yo, it's a folding ramp, too. That's awesome. So it goes... But that's not the whole story. Now we have to see if it'll pack. Now let's see. Crossing my fingers and hoping for the best, it will not pack. Okay, it's too wide. It's too wide to pack. Yeah, I mean, it, you can see right there it's taking up five units, but it's too wide to pack. So let me see. I'm going to give it one more little attempt. And we're going to go ahead and swap trucks back again to the Berlay T-100. Why will it not acknowledge that that exists? Okay, there we go. And move it forward just a tiny bit. And now see one more time if it'll pack. Nope! All right. Oh my god, I haven't driven this thing in a while. And the articulated steering is weird to get used to for like the first few seconds you drive it. Because it's always, like, trying to move itself around in this weird, like, snake motion. Now, this should have no problem packing. Like, if this has a problem packing, I'll be very surprised. Alright, so pack trucks. Now, let's put that handbrake on. So, the Azov Antarctic is packed, and it's good to go. Now, we're going to grab the Warrior and see if there's enough space to throw the Warrior up on that rear section. It's so huge, like... It's so much wider than a normal vehicle. Yeah, I mean, the Warrior fits. All right, stop engine, M-A-Z, and let's see, unpack and pack. All right, we're good to go there. Activate the ramps. Activates really well just on one, uh, one click. No weird, like, you know, finicky ramp stuff. All right, so let's head out for some testing. Now, I'm going to put the suspension in high mode. And I don't really know if this weight distribution right now is helping me or hurting me, but I'm hoping it's helping me. But, like, look at this thing. It's, I will say, it, the front end of it sticks out farther than almost any other truck that I've ever driven in SnowRunner. It is absolutely preposterous on how long the cab of the truck is. I mean... To be fair, the engine is right up there, like, right underneath you, right underneath the driver's seat, but still. Now, let's put it in high and see if it'll cross through here in high. High ain't that fast, but... You know what? That is dang impressive. Oh, I, I spoke too soon. It was dang impressive until I messed it up. No! But seriously, though, this is, like, really, really impressive. And if you need something that can cart cargo and vehicles around a map and just not care about anything else, like, it literally does not care about anything else. It will go wherever it needs to go or wherever it is needed. It just, like, all that it asks is that you drive it there. That's it. That's all this thing asks is that you drive it there. I mean... It doesn't, you don't really get perspective until you look next to it. And then you realize, oh. <laughs> then you realize, oh, it's that big. And you're like, yeah, it's that big. It's, it, it's, it's silly. It's absolutely silly. But the craziest part is that I remember this in Mudrunner. I remember attempting to take this thing down the truck night course in Mudrunner. 
And did it do very well? No, absolutely not. Absolutely freaking not. It didn't even come close to doing well. But the point is that a lot of people have memories with this thing from Mudrunner, and I think having it here in SnowRunner, I mean, I always love vehicles that bring back some nostalgia, and this one bring back it brings back, like, massive amounts of nostalgia for me. Absolutely massive amounts of nostalgia. So, let's see if we can drive it through the mud and not get stuck. I love how the advanced special gearbox is literally a two-speed in automatic mode. That's about it. I mean, I, I guarantee you the high range is basically the same as second gear because that's the only thing it can be. All right. Dropping down into the mud now with an Azov Antarctic as well as a, a Gladiator on the back. We are seeing... We're actually seeing a fairly good response from the truck, although I wouldn't recommend putting it in high. I am very certain that this thing would really stall itself out in here in high real quick. Now, will it completely, like, bury itself if I go for the first mud hole? I don't know, but I'm very inclined to try. I'm very inclined to find out. And I think, you know, we're probably only going to be attempting the first mud hole. We're probably not going to attempt the second one because I don't think it's going to really do the first one all that well. But I got to say, the all-wheel drive and all-the-time diff lock really does help. I mean, it helps a lot. All right, dipping it in. I mean, pretty impressive. Especially for all that weight on it. I mean, pretty impressive. It literally is just skimming across the mud. Well, I hesitate to use the term skimming because that would mean that it would be doing it comfortably. Like, you can see the wheels kind of hesitating a little bit. They're kind of freezing up here and there, which means there's a lot of weight and a lot of stress on those differentials. But even so, it's still continuing on. Good God, it's so insane. Like, it's so ridiculous in terms of, of what it's just able to drive across. The dips obstacle is going to be nothing for it. It's not even going to care about the dips, dips obstacle. Really, because it's, it's like there's no section that could get high centered. I mean, there's a tiny little section right back there towards the rear, but or, well, rather, towards the section where both frames meet. But still, even then, I don't really see that being a big enough gap for it to get high-centered. I really don't. And if it was a big enough gap for it to, to be high-centered, it wouldn't be high-centered for long. Oh, boy. All right. Dips obstacle. Let's see what you got. Come on. Turn it in. It is surprisingly maneuverable for how long the frame is. Yeah, look at this. It, it doesn't care. It doesn't care. I, it's, it, it, there's no way it can get high centered. I mean, I suppose if you really tried, you could, but I don't really see it getting high centered doing this. Had to go down a gear, but that's to be expected. I mean, with all this weight. Yo, she's moving. Come on. Let's go. God, that gladiator's just bouncing up and down like crazy. Come on. See what happens if I give it a little bit of power, a little bit of power, a little bit of power. It actually took really well with that little bit of power. I'm impressed. Dude, that was wonderful. Not even once did it even suggest that it wanted to get high centered. Not even once. Look at how much fuel we've used. All we've done is driven around the testing grounds. That's it. All right, there's second gear. What about neutral? Oh, she'll speed up in neutral. Use that weight to your advantage, baby. Come on. Go, 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 go. Oh, my God. Both vehicles stayed. Wow. Both vehicles stayed. Dude, that's incredible. That is absolutely freaking incredible. I love this thing. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this rig in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.